Owning the skies is critically important to be able to execute ground war, for example. So the technologies and the weapon systems that we bring really open up that ability to operate and engage uh, throughout the, the, the battle space uh, defined by the air domain. And it is about controlling the skies and dictating the terms of the fight and, and creating the solutions that we need, especially to make sure that we have that combat overmatch going in, whether it's air to air, air to ground, to be able to support the warfighter. Some might think, well, that, that's, that's an old weapon, uh, but I'm here to tell you that uh, over time, we've continued to evolve the weapon uh, year over year, bring, bring more to it. And if you look for, across the weapon from tip to tail, we've probably refreshed just about everything uh, within that weapon. Uh, made ourselves available to both fourth and fifth generation fighters, for example. Uh, just about any fighter from F-15, F-16, F-18, F-35, F-22, as well as some international partners. You see us on Eurofighter, for example. We're integrating on, on the Gripen. Uh, so it's, it's widely deployed. Over time, uh, we've updated the processor, for example, bringing in modern processors, high-speed processors. Uh, we're bringing in new uh, GPS uh, receivers and uh, modifying our inertial navigation system so that we can fly the weapon better, take advantage of GPS technology uh, and improve upon that. Uh, and as we look at what the current uh, areas of concern for the Department of Defense and their allies, range and speed to target are very critical things that, that the company is working on. A lot of those translate into to what we're doing with, with the AMRAM program in particular. Uh, we're looking at extended range motors, for example. How do we add range uh, and stay within the footprint of existing platforms? Other technologies I, I'd like to highlight is, is, is signal processing, which is critically important to us, is, is how do we take things that the weapon looks at, how do we process it that quickly, make good decisions, and then improve the performance of the weapon? As we think about air dominance, we need to stay one step ahead of what the adversary is doing. So it's not only processing what we're seeing, dealing with the capabilities of that fifth generation fighters, bringing in additional range, pilots would call outsticking the enemies. And I would say the other thing that we're doing is we're really focusing on digital technology and using that to accelerate the, the speed of the development that we are able to do to get these capabilities out to the warfighter. We're able to produce thousands of scenarios to analytically evaluate what the flight path is going to look like before we actually put a weapon on an aircraft to test. It just, it, it accelerates the development and it's at a much lower cost. Do we have the right capabilities, whether it's from a data link or secure communications, to be able to employ those weapons uh, across a broad theater and in extended ranges? Those are the kind of things that we're working and bringing into our weapon systems today. If you've got the longer range, you can win and get there quicker and, and kill that and then create that air dominance.